not sure if you're at the computer. Uh, it it sounded like you're not. So let me know if. Yeah, I am. Uh, I am at the computer. I can hear you as well. Oh, cool. So I was wondering if you would be able to actually sh share a screen and kind of attempt to to answer the use case with the current uh, tools, which is you know the the PubMed, Embase, and maybe Doctor Evidence, if you had um, time to to play with that, uh, just so we can observe and understand like what you're trying to do and what's missing from from that as a tool and uh, just like see some patterns. Okay, um, so I can, of course, I can share my screen. I can, I can show you what I would do. However, um, I can only uh, access the PubMed now because I'm using my private computer, oh. and uh, for the Embase, I need my 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 company uh, uh, laptop, and I'm not really. Potentiality reasons. I, I can I can share the screen uh, showing you the Embase search. So uh, I, I have some concerns in this regard. But but um, regarding PubMed is, is it's not a problem at all. Um, okay. What so what what now you are expecting from me is is to is to see how usually I'm going through on a uh, request and and I'm transforming into a search. And how I'm 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 selecting articles and 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 I don't know downloading and and starting to process and extract data from the articles. This is what you would like to see now, or yeah, well, I'm almost uh, yeah, a theoretical walkthrough of your process as it is right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we can okay. take the use case that you gave us with the uh, heart rhythm and hydroxychloroquine. Uh, treatments so we can model that or something, or something similar if you prefer to work through that it depends on what you want what you can work with uh -huh. okay. just, just want to see how you work and ask questions as you work a little bit more than anything please confirm if you can see my screen we can Yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, so um, let's start um, with the with the um, logic of the search, uh, this is usually how I'm starting to 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 define the search um, because usually this is the first uh, step what I'm doing. So we are searching for uh, COVID-19. Um, we are searching for hydroxychloroquine, and we are searching for health uh, rhythm. Um, sorry problems or issues or any problems. Rob. So uh, what I'm doing usually, I'm, I'm opening the mesh database. Um, the mesh, it's, um, uh, should I explain what, what does it mean or are you familiar with the mesh? So talk, when talk, us through, actually talk us through, uh, yeah. talk us through what you were, you, you, you were doing and yeah. And basically, Kind of think of it as explaining as you go, but not in a teaching sense, just like these are the thoughts you're having, this is what you're going to look at, this is why I'm going to click, just literally, yeah. the okay. thoughts that you're having, try and verbalize as much as you can, there is no such thing as too much verbalizing. Yeah, um, so first I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to collect the best keywords for my search. For the COVID-19, uh, I don't have to do this because uh, um, in my uh, in my search in in my own web page, I already have a uh, a search which is uh, a search string which is quite profound and and uh, um, I think it's uh, uh, it's appropriate. Um, so this would be the search string for identify articles for COVID nineteen. So I would start with this. The next one is to uh, to search for the treatment itself. 
and, and the way how I'm usually searching for it is again, go back to the mesh database, searching for the drug. Uh, sorry, there should be a typo Four somewhere. Point. Yeah, sorry, my. The, the second. Uh, how can I, yeah, in the, how can I remove this line at the top? Okay. Oh, I think we, we've got Subtarshi joining in. So I'll, I'll just quickly explain to him what, what is happening. So as you can see on my screen, I'm on the, on the hydroxychloroquine uh, site in the mesh database. The, the thing why I'm, uh, the reason why I'm using this is because I, I, hear, I have these entry terms here and these are quite useful uh, tips. What uh, additional keywords or phrases should I include into the search? So usually the way you have what I'm doing, I'm going through the entry terms. I'm trying to figure out which one of these terms are, are relevant for my purposes. And I'm adding those, those, those terms into, into my search uh, with the appropriate Boolean operator. Uh, in, in this current case, um, I need any of these uh, uh, terms in, in, in my search. And finally, the outcome, the way for searching uh, the appropriate uh, Rhythm's got a H, R, H, Y. Well done, man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. And, and another, another very useful tool beside of the entry terms is uh, it's, uh, this, this um, term tree, uh, which will show you uh, what a uh, narrower or more broad uh, expression could be used for, for my own purposes. And uh, in, in this case, I think that within heart diseases, if I'm searching for, for uh, cardiac arrhythmia, that would cover a lot of, uh, a lot of additional um, uh, diseases, disorders, which could be probably uh, relevant for my, uh, for my search. So uh, what I would do is, uh, is I'm, I'm selecting this most broad term, uh, arrhythmias and cardiac, and I would use this one uh, in my search. Um, Just let me know if I'm too detailed or I, if I sh should yeah, do it. There's no such thing. Just I'll, the more we understand, the better we can understand the process. The better we understand okay. the process, the better we can simplify where we can understand if there is yeah, a simplifying okay. place. Yeah. So I, I added the, uh, the cardiac arrhythmias as, as mesh term into my search. And additionally, I'm also adding this uh, um, free text keywords. Uh, probably it's enough if, uh, if I'm adding arrhythmias. Sorry. Um, or this arrhythmia. And this is an other. Um, is a French spelling, I think, Diana. Yeah. So uh, basically, I would start with uh, with that search string as first. I'm going back to PubMed. I'm running the search, checking the 
hit number and I see 75 articles uh, and um, yeah, since there is, n yeah, the 75 articles, not too much, I, I would not use any future um, rest restrictions uh, for for article type for for text availability or or language or anyone uh, anything else um, what I would do now as the next step is is going through uh, on the titles of the of the articles and and um, I'm, I will I will select and open new articles which seems to be relevant based on the title. Um, so I would select right first one, COVID-19 cardiovascular implicated risk assessment. Maybe I will read an abstract of the second one as well. So Safety how do you consideration uh, which ones to read at this stage? So, um, yeah, um, practice, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's my, you know, first one, it's, it's a review about the hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine treatment. I, must, I assume that it should contain some results as well, because usually the review articles are, 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 are giving me good right? start but points, for example. Not Sorry, I'm not, I'm not hearing you. Not a theoretical uh, study, but actual like results uh, when it comes to clinical trials or something like that. Yeah, well, a, re a review is a review of other all yeah. pieces of, like it's a comparison piece of several pieces isn't yeah it? even 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 if the review article itself is not useful at the end it can help me to identify future articles and uh, you, by, by checking the cross references and can 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 help me to 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 find other relevant studies uh, of course in the current case since we are talking about covid-19 and hydroxychloroquine i not i'm not really expecting much um, uh, um, relevant uh, cross references which are not appearing in in the in the in the PubMed search, and that's just still, the nature of the thing. Such a specific search yeah. with such a specific set of connections that we've looked at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rather than something that would be a more general drug in a more general scenario. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the second one, uh, I see the COVID nineteen and the cardiovascular system mentioned, and the reason why the second uh, uh, article is appearing in my list that that it's it's sure that the the hydroxychloroquine is somewhere mentioned in the article. So probably it's a it's a it's a also some kind of review article, but it should it can contain some some relevant information. So the first one, the first and the second. Uh, are are I'm, I'm not really sure that they will be useful, but I would read the abstract quickly. Uh, third, well, safety considerations uh, of of the drug in the in the SARS -CoV, uh, CoV two infection. So I'm quite sure that this article will, contains uh, useful information. Cardiovascular manifestation treatment considerations. Uh, this seems to be too broad to me. I mean, uh, I mean, based on on the title. Uh, so I'm not sure that in the first run I would I would check or or, or read the abstract of of the fourth. And uh, actually, I would I would go through on 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 the 75 articles what we can see here, and I would I would somehow decide whether based on the uh, on the title of the article it seems really relevant or not. And and uh, instead of going through on on, on on many other articles, I I I'm, I'm jumping to the first hit just to see the review, so we can go through quickly on the abstract. This is the this is the next step. What I'm always doing, I'm reading through it and I'm trying to decide uh, that uh, whether the, the article is really good for me or not. So just let me read through on it quickly. Yeah, um, existing in vitro and clinical studies. Uh, so I think that the article will be fine. So I would move forward with, with selecting this article. So I'm opening the PDF and I'm trying to download it for data extraction. 
Um, luckily, the PDF is available. I can download it. Just put on the desk, desktop. And, and basically, uh, yeah, usually I'm, I'm not, I'm not checking the PDFs, uh, one by one during the, the article selection, but I'm collecting all of the relevant articles in a folder. And if I'm, if I, if I finish uh, the review of all the re relevant hits, uh, in, in the past, I will start the uh, the PDFs, but now um, I'm, uh, I'm I will use a different method because yeah I don't want to waste your time for any long. So yeah, let's see this article. Um, hydroxychloroquine. So Tommy, just quickly. So basically, yeah. the process is you go through all of the hits because it seemed like enough that you could scan through them and and from the summaries you could work out if there was likely relevant information or not. Then you yes. tap all of them open, and then the, then you from the abstract of each one, you decide whether actually it is a good fit or not, and you download it, and then you put them all in one folder, and then work through them manually in the sense that you'd literally read the whole, the entirety yes. of each one. Would you be making notes? Yes. Okay. Uh, so move on to that um, if you can do that stage. Not really. Not really. Sorry, uh, it was not made by intention. Um, rotating back. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Hello, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Um, I can hear. And that was okay, I saw that my internet connection is broken, but okay, now I can hear. So yeah, uh, no, I'm 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 not I'm not uh, I'm not always writing notes. Of, of course, it also depends on 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 the on the nature of the review. Um, in case if if it's a really really um, uh, sensitive uh, topic, uh, then it can happen that I'm I'm write um, just very short notes for myself to inform the client that. Uh, that um, just to just to let let her or, or or him know why I did not select finally the paper, or what was the reason for for rejecting it, but 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 uh, usually I'm not I'm not writing notes uh, about about the selection, so yeah um, and yeah and 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 uh, and the next step what I'm doing is uh, is to going through on the articles usually if if it's not a review but a a a primary research study um, I'm always starting with the tables because this is what uh, what is telling me the 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 the, the best and the best yeah wealth formation. And and uh, yeah, in case of review studies, uh, this method is slightly different because I'm not expecting um, uh, too much relevant information from the tables. So I would I would uh, I would uh, check the methods section first, uh, how the articles were selected, uh, and and after I would I would um, check the results and. And and thereafter, uh, the future steps are to to um, highlight those uh, text parts, sections, paragraphs which are uh, um, relevant, which could be used for for future data extraction. Um, because uh, this is how. Not only the extracted data, but but also to see um, uh, the source of the of the information, and um, and yeah, basically the article selection is a, and and the data extraction for me it works like this. Do you have any any further question? Would you like to know the the, the additional steps while making a review? Yeah, a couple of quick questions. What kind of information 
do you expect in the, in the tables in terms of the columns? Because uh, obviously if you're looking yeah. at the review uh, paper, that's gonna be very different than another type of paper. But for this specific purpose of the heart rhythm and hydroxychloroquine, what, what type of columns do you expect in there? So there are um, uh, um, columns or fields or variables which are always there regardless of the of the indication or topic. So I'm always extract, uh, extracting information about the author's name, the country where the study was conducted, the, the, the year when the study was published, and also the time period when the data was collected. Uh, yeah, of COVID-19, this is not really relevant information because it will be always the same in uh, uh, 2020, uh, uh, um, but usually I'm, I'm uh, relevant information. And additionally, I'm always uh, uh, asked to, 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 to identify the, the source data. So how data was collected, was it a primary data collection? Was it a, a, a um, reanalysis of, uh, of medical records or hospital data? Um, uh, was it a, a retrospective uh, study or, or, or was the data prospectively collected? Also the, the, the study type and, uh, and the design of the studies always need to be mentioned uh, in the, in the, um, while extracting information from an article. Uh, in this current case, uh, I would write, of course, review, uh, but, uh, but in case of, of a, a, a primary study, uh, primary information, uh, of course, the, the appropriate uh, um, uh, study type should be uh, identified, whether it was a, a, for example, a randomized clinical trial, a retrospective uh, cohort study or a cross-sectional uh, study or a case control study or whatever. Um, so these are the inform and and yeah and another another type of information is is it's it's uh, also very important is to describe the baseline the basic characteristics of the patients. Um, how the patients were enrolled. Uh, of course the number of Sorry? Like age, sex, and other parameters, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this, these are, so the first, first the number of, of, of patients or number of, uh, of individuals, not, not necessarily patients, who were enrolled in the study, how they were selected, were they um, uh, consecutive patients in a, in a um, um, outpatient clinic or, or were they uh, um, admitted patient in a hospital? Um, of course, the gender, the, the age uh, distribution, uh, very briefly, uh, regarding the gender is a proportion is enough. The, uh, for, for the age, uh, we are usually describing a um, mean or median value, but also the range or the uh, uh, or the interquartile range or standard deviation. This is also the information what we are extracting from, from the article, so, if available. So the, the um, statistics around samples, sample sizes and, yes, and the yes, statistical data yes. around that. Okay. Yes. For example, in case of a case control study, uh, we, I have, or, or in case of a, a placebo control clinical trial, I have more than one uh, study group, so I need to extract information for both uh, or or all the study groups. What I'm what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm what is described in the paper and what is what is uh, um, interesting for for my purpose. So, so when so it comes are, to this extracting of data that you're talking about, like if you're looking at different, um, what would you be using to record the day would you just use a spreadsheet would it just be like a like a note file that you've been working from is there any sort of particular a table a table it's it's it's, uh, it's it's always easier to 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 fill out it's always easier to to see through uh, or 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 to to yeah um double check or or so yeah I'm, I'm i'm always using tables or spreadsheet for 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 the first type of data extraction 
Um, for the future steps, what I not explained yet uh, is the is the summarizing the information. This is this is the slice. Uh, yeah, this is the this is the next stage uh, when I am. Um, uh, yeah. As I told, uh, somehow, somehow summarizing all the information what I described and identified and extra and, and extracted uh, from from the articles. But going back to the to the fields and variables and columns, uh, um, uh, I, I what I told you so far is the is the most common information what I'm always extracting from studies. But for example, in this, this current case, um, uh, the net, uh, data type, uh, of course, is how the outcome was defined. So if I'm searching for arrhythmia or or some health rhythm problems, I I have to I have to to, to identify those art those uh, text parts in the in the in the article, which describes how the author defined the arrhythmia. Was it a a um, ICD code based uh, definition? Uh, did they use a a own definition? Was it uh, uh, diagnosed by uh, the investigator or by the by the doctor, or or, or was it retrospectively um, um, uh, um, I, uh, diagnosed by the, the by the person who made the review of the medical records, so it is it is also a very important information how the outcome uh, again the outcome in, in in our case is the is the arrhythmia, so how the outcome was defined. Uh, yeah. So next... so in that so in that sense, if we could make it so we could work out how to extract the way articles define certain terms, especially a term that was maybe in the title or in the abstract, and making sure that, yeah, if, if it talks about arrhythmia, there's somewhere in the article it'll talk about specifically how it defines the arrhythmia compared to someone who doesn't have arrhythmia in that sense. Can I actually take over a screen and ask you, uh, like, if this is something that moves it closer to what you would be looking uh, for so um, I I went to our demo and typed in arrhythmia and selected elderly, and um, here is a list of uh, named entities that got extracted by the uh, AI machine learning model. Is this something that uh, would help you, or you would need an extra layer, like of where specifically this cardiac arrhythmia was in the paper, or like specific method of diagnostic of it. Um, what um, um, could you please explain uh, the, the columns? So the first named entity is UMLS. I don't know what it does. Yeah, so it this is the uh, med universal like, medical language. language. It's literally okay. just a dictionary, a definition. It's a dictionary definition. It's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So th this is basically, in my understanding, is machine learning has used a number of reference points and then it's collected all these words that are similar, a little bit like how you did the mesh searches, but these are words that are connected to each other or define the same thing with different words. And the UM UMLS has these interconnected words and defines them. It probably pulls from the same place, or mesh probably uses the same um, structure behind it in the sense that- Yeah, it, seems, it like seems to definition. be relevant. Yeah, I think that it's it's uh, it's it's something that's 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 cool and it's, it's, it could be could be used. Um, the um, the difference between or I don't know if this is really a difference, but is there other question? So if, uh, if these, uh, for example, in in case of cardiac arrhythmia in the first line, um, uh, the EI is also searching for for other uh, relevant. Uh, uh, f um, terms and phrases, uh, for example, in case the arrhythmia is is, is written in another way as yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, so that's the purpose exactly. Of it's the grouping exactly. Like UMLS groups them into less definitions that are all basically okay. the same. It's an interchange. It's almost in takes all of this the 20 different ways that, for example, that something is said across all the medical you know all the medical language and simplifies it into a single 
this like this is this group of things means one thing or near enough one thing in most scenarios and what, scenario. and what is the difference between the first and second lines of course beside of the cardiac word um uh, it's literally just yeah sometimes cardiac will be there and sometimes a cardiac will be it's, it's actually the different dictionaries that we use so we use okay. the umls and uh, the general i i think the disease uh, dictionary so essentially it's just a redundant way of showing things but the the whole concept is when uh, there is hydroxychloroquine there are many names you know a h uh, c q and others and yeah. we we're grouping them by the these dictionaries to be able to actually find all the occurrences and showcase that mm -hmm. A little bit like you went to the effort of going to that mesh and then when the mesh you said you, you scrolled down oh, yeah. and went okay all of that stage we're trying to do in one stage without you having to do it all you give it one word and it'll go find all the words in the dictionaries that connect to it rather than you have to manually go and do the mesh searches. Uh huh. Uh huh. I see. I see. I see. I see. So then it's 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 it seems to be quite useful. The 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 next question is how can I combine uh, keywords um, in in using the AI search? So if I'm searching for the and 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 arrhythmia, so in, if I need both terms and uh, and. Uh, uh, phrases included in my search. This is something that also can be done in the, in the current... Um, yeah, so um, uh, we've talked about that when the, we got that query from Twitter of combining uh, hydroxychloroquine was the, the other queries. So what we've done, and it's again a proof of concept and it's uh, a very slow one, but essentially we have a second input which is end and obviously, since this is just a proof of concept, uh, there, there, there would be many more ends, ideally, if we would build a mm -hmm. full-fledged system. But uh, you can actually play around with this end system. Um, it's there in Slack and see if, if that satisfies um, the, the use case. Because for this one, it's actually pre-filled with hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin and it finds the 500 papers on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's loading, it's, it's slow, but um, here. Mm -hmm. I see. So and, and, that means and, 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 now so, it works with two. Uh, so only only two set of keywords can be combined uh, with with the current. As of right uh, now, but uh, essentially, so if this is a need, we can actually ex expand into that and make it uh, you know un un unlimited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because of it, and you need to think of the fact that you don't need to do because you had it before with like this and with booleans and this version, and, and we're, we're kind of doing we're getting rid of all of the extra boolean work because it's automatically being done. But obviously, if you have like three or four, you're looking for a heart condition and a drug and another drug and geriatric patients or something like that. If if, the, if you needed all them questions, but I think some of them parts of it, for example, will come in the. Uh, in the in the tool where you can click it's like like elderly. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well that'd more than likely be only drugs or illnesses that only go in that option. So I don't know how many you'd feel like would be the appropriate amount, but, but that's the only things you'd ever really put in there because the study types are separate. The, yeah, the, the study types are separate, the, the population types are separate, like they're already stripped off and they're separate filters once that search is done. So it's a case of how many do you feel like, how many variables would you need to be able to search to this? You know, or would it be a, a would unlimited be a practical choice? I don't know. What do you reckon, Arthur? It's hard to say. Oh, but this is helpful already. So we kind of learned a um, couple of things. 
uh, it just to summarize it. First of all, it's super, super complex to build queries for very specific things in uh, environments such as PubMed. Uh, I can only assume that Ambase and other uh, paid tools make it a little bit easier, uh, but there's still some lag work. Actually, uh, I, uh, my point of view is the Ambase is, is, is a bit more complex. Uh, in, in the Ambase, I have m uh, much more filters, much more options to narrow the search. Uh, so um, if, if I need to, to be really, really very specific in, in, in searching papers, uh, I'm, 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 I'm choosing Ambase because it's providing me much more options. Got it. And the second learning that I see is that there is a, a, there is a lack of tools or like toolkits to help you expand your empirical knowledge about which papers to read or not to read. And there should be some highlights from these papers to make your reasoning faster instead of downloading the paper and actually going through it. The third learning that I have observed is the importance of the actual literature review tables and specific things that uh, researchers are interested to see in them. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the last one is um, the actual extractions of the kind of the, the, the reasoning why certain things exist in a paper. Like if there is, um, you know, correct, a cardiac uh, arrest, like why, like was it a diagnosis? Was it, you know, patients with, uh, with that uh, diagnosis or was it just a study on, you know, general um, like applicability of, of drugs to things like cardiac arrest. So kind of relevancy of the term to the actual topic. That's absolutely, yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, but honestly, um, I'm a little bit concerned. How can you build a tool, a AI driven tool that can help the, the, the re reviewer uh, to, to, to select the relevance? Because, because it's sometimes it's really, really not an easy task to, 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 to make these decisions. So yes. that's, that's, that's why I, uh, on my own website, I created, uh, or I did this feature that, uh, that highlights sentences uh, that contains relevant yeah. or, 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 or keywords because, because uh, yeah, a reading a whole sentence uh, in, a, in a method section could probably answer me that question where the article is really yeah, uh, relevant. Yeah, and imagine. that would be the first kind of like iteration, just highlighting and maybe adding some tags, you know, um, that this, this was just a random occurrence of cardiac arrest across the article and it actually doesn't have anything to do with the topic of research. Yeah. It was just mentioned by, by researchers. I mean, you can tell that to a certain extent because the way that the articles are weighted right now, that you can see the ones at the top are the ones where the, the occurrence of these words is a lot within the article. And obviously if something's mentioned 150, 200 times within a, 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 an academic piece of paper, it's quite, it's quite certain that it's Obviously, a very key component to the to the to the to the paper, but it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that something that mentions it four times doesn't have some relevant learnings. It just obviously has a lot less because yeah. there's a lot less mm -hmm. mentions of it. But that's why it's weighted the way it is. But we need to work out how to maybe change the weighting depending on what people are looking for again as well. But yeah. summarizing is going to be definitely a complex problem linguistically. We understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely a known problem. So I, I feel that we actually got a lot of things to digest. I would like to take uh, you know, the rest 15 minutes to, um, to talk with uh, Saptarshi. And he has been listening uh, to us on the call. And um, yeah, basically the context is we're just learning how researchers are doing this now to help um, improve the current process. Uh, what do you think? Well, let us know. Uh, sir, I, I got enlightened a lot uh, by listening to all of you uh, regarding the, the the challenging task you all have taken, and I really appreciate that. Uh, sir, I want to add a few more things to what you are already doing. Uh, much emphasis has been given on the treatment aspect, like what are the various modes of treatment that are taking place in various parts of the world. But what I believe is that 
we must also delve into some of the research that are taking place in pertaining to protecting people from getting this particular virus. Like, uh, there are a lot many confusions regarding how much distance should be maintained, what type of mask one should wear, or whether there is enough evidence that uh, the virus gets transmitted from fomite that is surface to human transmission or not. If such type of uh, researches can also be delved into, that would augur well. And in addition to that, uh, sir, I would also like to highlight a few aspects of what are taking a place in India, especially in my country. Some of the interesting aspects that have uh, come uh, into the limelight are, there is an area in Mumbai known as Dharavi. I think you all are aware of Mumbai, the financial capital of India. So there is a place called Dharavi, which is the, which is the biggest slum in the world and uh, where the population density is very high. Now the thing is that uh, in a serological survey, what interesting fact got revealed is that 57% of the population had that uh, are having that uh, antibody that is immunoglobulin G, which is required to protect one from this uh, deadly virus. So how these people are getting protected, how one particular country is having fewer infection fatality rates, like India, if, if I compare India to USA and other developing countries like UK, you can see the fatality yeah. rates are lot lower. It's, that comes, I mean, we need to it, it is some really interesting, yeah. yeah, it's some really interesting, it is some really interesting thoughts. Um, it is kind of probably what researchers are interested in, but I mean, I can look at clearly that there is obviously like style of living, like the West is notorious for it's much less healthy living, much higher cases of diabetes, diabetes and heart conditions are a very clear condition of risk increase. But um, as much as this is an interesting topic, I'm not sure um, for, for expanding on tools and, and trying to develop on it because it is part of the systemic problem, but not not in the purview of the work we're currently focused on mostly with regard to the building this review tool. It will be obviously a problem that needs to be looked at in a different way, but that's kind of what we want researchers to be able to do and we want to help researchers get to that information by increasing the ability to digest researched information already and yes maybe some maybe understanding places like the, the, um, the outskirts of uh, Mumbai and and the, obviously the, the, the living environment and how that affects it but if it's a slum you can statistically say the population is going to be poorer and if it's going to be poorer there's going to be a lot more vegetarian a lot less unhealthy heat eating habits so you can even summarize some quite clear patterns that exist within their demographics but as much as it's we could probably talk all day long about this i don't know where that's going right now direction to work and try and make these tools better for for the researchers that are actually going to be doing the research yeah i think um what what we're trying to accomplish is empower people uh that have these kind of like concerns and uh, scientific questions with a tool to much quicker uh analyze things like for example if there is a you know research paper from mumbai they should be able to find it much quicker than they are right now when it comes to actual like you know building these complex queries that Andre was was showing for a specific you know direction of research. Yes. Do you currently use any of the uh, the tools for scientific uh, literature uh, review process? Uh, no, sir. Actually, to be honest, I do not use any kind of tools. I just basically I am uh, I have uh, enrolled into a research uh, researcher app. Uh, that is one app which comes uh, papers from all reputed magazines, including Lancet and other uh, reputed journals, and then they put the data in a very simplified form. So I I basically access all those uh, those apps and uh, some of the magazines I have got subscriptions of. Is it a paid so app? Basically, uh, no, so it's not a paid app. Can you uh, what's this application free. called? The researcher called? app. I, if I can, if I can uh, share the screen, I can possibly show you. Yeah, that would be great. Go for it. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, let's see that. 
All right, just so give me some time, just some time before I share. No problem. Some time. So. And while well, uh, Saptarshi figure, figures it out, um, Andre, in terms of um, in terms of those kind of like uh, research processes, do you think that there's a benefit to kind of uh, storing these complex queries as uh, these scientific questions? Like what what I mean is. Would you benefit from going to a central place where you can see other researchers that are building these complex queries and just being able to, you know, explore them one by one and see these collections of papers that pertain to like uh, arrhythmia and hydroxychloroquine in, uh, you know, specific direction of research? Yes, actually, this, uh, that's a good, good, good uh, uh, question, and I think that um, yeah, that could be a really useful tool to 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 see how the other people, how the researchers perform their search, because because yeah, as as you saw, uh, I'm 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 always uh, spending time and, and energy to 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 find all the relevant. Uh, uh, keywords, phrases uh, for a specific outcome, for example. So, if I if, if I could get some some suggestions or some 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 tips how the others did the same search, then it could be definitely a a, a, a useful help. Yeah, absolutely. So almost like so if, like, well, like, yeah. we, like with the tool yeah, we've got so far, if, for example, you typed in the, a, a word, hydroxychloroquine, for example, and then in the second one, rather than it being like just an empty option, it could give you like top 10 of things, other things people are searching with this. And then if you wanted to, if there was another box after that, you could click on it. It's like, well, often this search go, you know, people often search this with this and these four terms. Would that seem like something that could be a way of simplifying it and making you understand like where the weight of people are looking at? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I have no idea how we build that, but that sounds like something we could ask, <laughs> yeah. a, techni ask a technical person to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the idea is great, I, I agree. Because it's almost like a customer recommendation system. Well, if you like this book, people who read these books I, like I can this book, that book, and that book. You know, it's a, just a recommendation system, but based on searches instead. Anyways, Septashi. Yes, sir. I'm sharing the screen. Go ahead. this one was uh, what i was talking about you can either have it in the app form or you can get it in the website just you have to log in uh, you can register with the help of your google id and uh, then you can just access you can choose the journals which you want to access and then you can just navigate across those journals so this is one of the ways I generally do my researches and whatever I want to search and whatever information I want to gather. Uh, there are some other ways also. Uh, I mean, uh, but not those uh, sort of uh, search by using uh, computer tools or technological tools all of you are doing. So more mundane sort of a search I do. So uh, this is the the feed, right? So this is the the article that is uh, what like recommended to you, or no? This is no. This is just one of uh, this is just an example. I am showing you the the site. I mean, you can you can browse, you can navigate across the journals like I'm doing. Just so 
So is it, uh, so I saw there is a question and findings. So kind of very simple format of what the study was trying to research and what the, uh, what was the outcome, right? Correct. That's cool. And these are, these are numerous journals and uh, very reputed journals one can access to. The Journal of the American College of Cardiology. There are a number of researchers pertaining to COVID-19 also going on. I mean, the Lancet is there. Lancet Infectious Diseases, one of the very renowned journals. So with that one, does it basically just list most recent articles? Is it just almost like a news thread for research articles? Like this is one of the studies that were, that was conducted uh, 12 days ago. That was published 12 days ago. That is the observations of the global epidemiology of COVID-19 from the pre-pandemic period using web-based surveillance, the cross-sectional analysis. So like this, I generally access to uh, uh, the studies and uh, whatever research publications that are being, uh, I mean, published, yes. Um, well, when it comes to looking on here, is it like, I think, I'm, is it just, I mean, what, what's the, can you, can you look on the search for me and see what, how the set, their search function work and how okay. much, okay. like, how much, like, granularity is within their search or if it's just, yeah, simple terms. So these are some of the search, search results that have come up. Diagnosis and prediction model for COVID-19 patients respond to treatment based on convolutional neural networks and whole optimization algorithm using CT images. So this particular study has used a prediction model, I think much uh, in the line of what you all are doing. Yeah, they're using AI prediction models based on uh, CT scans, looking at CT scans and then using summaries of the scan to try and work out how, if it's a viral pneumonia or not, just from the, just from the context of what so, so this is an easy to use app. I mean, one can download it on mobile or one can either access it on their laptops or computers. Just one needs to log in. And, and it's quite a good app as uh, I'm associated with this particular app for, for almost a year. And it has augured well me for various uh, research-based assignments and activities, which I'm doing mostly as a freelancer. Got it. I, I signed up. I'll check it out. And thanks for recommending. Okay. Can I can I stop sharing? Absolutely. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I have to jump on another call, but this has been super insightful, both from the perspectives of Andre and you, Subtarshi. Uh, Subtarshi, by the way, I highly recommend you fill out the form and join Slack. Yes, sir. Um, I'm doing that. That will be uh, join, join into Slack and join in the conversations uh, and join the calls. We'll see more of you happily. Awesome. Cheers, cheers. And I'll, I'll send the recording of this call to Sergey and our UX people too. And hopefully they'll, they'll be able to, to update the wireframes that we have right now to ideate a much- I'm having some doctor friends also. I would ask them, though they're very busy, but uh, they can give some time. No that would be uh, uh, Any and all help from any medical professionals is always useful. Yeah. Obviously, we understand how busy they are, so we're not going to be like even ten minutes of their time would be already helpful. Yes. All right. Sure. Thanks, everyone. Have a good Thank day, you. night. Bye, bye. Cheers, guys. Thanks.